By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to a brand new episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back for round number two from the Hill Giant Cup, the old school tournament held in Hilversum, the Netherlands. And in round number two, we are going to look at Kundert, who's playing a zoo deck, and he's going to take on Denzel, and he's on Red Green Tron. So the Denzel deck, I'm really interested in it, but more about that, of course, in the deck tech section, as always. Before I start with that, though, I would just like to point out that you can also decide to go straight to the games. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. Just click on there and it'll take you straight to the game action. And here I'm going to start with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the Zoo deck of Kunert. Let's take a look. And here we see the deck of Kunert. And wow, I mean, this is really a fast Zoo deck, right? Usually you see some Urn and Jins in there. Sometimes also blue in there for Serendips. But this is really white, red, green. Um, and it's playing with savannah lines that you can find in the zoo. It's playing with curd apes, but look at that. There's a newcomer in this list, for me at least, for a zoo deck, and that's the Atok. So there's a lot of artifacts in the deck as well, probably because of that Atok. I do see a little strategy there with the Howling Mine and the Relic Barrier. So there are two artifacts in the game of Magic that you can kind of tap to deactivate, and those artifacts are the Howling Mine and the Winter Orb. So in this case, you have the Howling Mine, that allows you to, of course, draw an extra card. Now then, before it's the end of your turn, you can tap your own Howling Mine with the Relic Barrier, and then your opponent doesn't get that Howling Mine bonus because the Howling Mine is deactivated. So in that way, you can kind of build a one-sided card draw engine. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm, I'm liking this, I guess, with the Atox. The deck is looking very aggressive. There are a lot of one-drops. You've got, of course, Savannah Lines, Curd Ape. You know, Taiga Curdave, that's a classic. You got a 2 3 in turn one. So that's looking quite good. So this deck can go very quickly. We have two Berserks there in combination with Giant Grove. So that is very, very dangerous. So, I mean, looking at this deck, it wants to have fast and quick games, which I think is going to be a little tough for Denzel, the opponent, because he's on Tron. And usually with Tron, you want some time to build things. So I'm not sure if he's going to get that time. Talking about that deck, let's take a look at Denzel's list. And here we see a few cards in the deck of Denzel because unfortunately I do not have a deck photo so his deck remains a bit of a mystery. What I do know though is that he's playing Tron in combination with the colors red and green. I know that he's playing Urnimgins, he's playing Berserks and of course he's playing Fireballs, maybe also Disintegrates and the reason I'm saying of course is because of that Tron component, right? Tron is a strategy where you play with Urza's Tower, Urza's Mine and Urza's Power Plant. These lands usually tap for one colorless mana. But when you've got all three of them, the plant and the mine tap for two mana and the Urza's Tower taps for three. So it's an easy way. Well, it's not easy, but when you assemble the three lands, which is really not easy, I know from experience. But when, once you do, um, it can be a way to generate a lot of mana. And then the question is, what are you going to do with all that mana? Usually it's a big fireball, but of course there are some other options as well. So I'm really kind of curious to see what choices Denzel has made, especially in the green side of his deck. I know he's playing with Urnums, um, so he's playing with Urnums and Berserks. I wonder if he's also playing with Colossus of Sardia, because I like the idea of putting a Berserk on a Colossus of Sardia. That would just be absolutely epic. Um, and I guess there are not any X spells in green that would be useful. Maybe he's playing with Stream of Life. That would be kind of cool as well. I guess Stream of Life with Sylvan Library could kind of be some synergy. Sylvan Library, I assume, is going to play with that because that would be my main reason to play with green in the Tron build. Perhaps he's also playing with Titania Song, turning all his non-creature artifacts into creatures. That would be pretty cool as well. So it's just a big question mark because I'm not quite sure what Denzel is going to do. Uh, but we are going to find out, right? We're going to see him in action, see his deck in action. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, anyway, we've looked at the deck of Kundert. We've now kind of discussed Denzel's deck, which is a big question mark. Uh, and that means we are ready. Let's go to round number two of the Hill Giant Cup. Game number one here at round number two at the Hill Giant Cup. So we have Kundert on the left with his Zoo deck. It looks like he's taking a mulligan. And on the right, we have Denzel with his red green Tron deck. There we see a Plateau, tapping the Plateau into a Curd Ape. So that Curd Ape needs a forest, but it's not there yet. Maybe in turn two. There's a Taiga. Does have a Bolt in hand there, passes the turn. You can kind of see that hand there of Denzel. There is a Savannah, and there is a Bolt on the Ape. 
Ooh, there's a giant growth. That is unfortunate. So he's going to take five points of damage. This is really a bad scenario here for Denzel. So instead of getting rid of the threat, he's taking three extra points of damage. There is an Urza's Mine. Playing a bolt now again, killing the ape. And passing the turn here. There is a Taiga, so uh, all the duels there assembled for Kundert. And playing a Savannah Lines with a Savannah, I like that, style points. And he's playing a Copper Tablet, so Copper Tablet deals one damage during your upkeep. So he's going to drop to 14, and of course Copper Tablet works together really well with that uh, aggro strategy of Kundert. And it also works quite nice with the uh, Atox that he has in his deck. So there we see a City of Brass. Is that a Felwer Stone there? Yep, that's a Felwer Stone. Tapping two, taking a, another damage, gonna go to 13. There's a Howling Mine. This is risky though, like, oh, Gundert's really happy seeing that Howling Mine. Another line of play could have been for Denzel to keep uh, a green open to potentially play the Berserk on the Savannah line. Of course, that means he takes four points of damage. But I mean, I think the Howling Mine is so risky against an aggressive deck. He's already on 13, gonna drop you to 11. Can Kundert play some extra threats? There's an Atok hitting the board. And I do believe I see an Urnum Jin there in the hand of Denzel. So he can play an Urnum Jin next turn, which, which would be quite nice. He's going to take another damage from the Copper Tablet. Going to go to 10. There's a Taiga. So now he can tap for 4 without taking a damage. There's the Urnum Jin probably. So a 4 or 5 creature from Arabian Nights. This is the Chronicles version. And during your upkeep, you have to give Forest Walk to a creature of your opponent. And first, of course, Gunder taking a damage from his own Copper Tablet. So it works for both players, so he's now on 18. And did he draw two cards? I believe he only drew one card. There's the attack. Yeah, this is tough for Denzel, but he has to block. He's going to go here for the Lion. I think personally I would have considered going for the Atog because if he's got a giant growth in hand he could kill both anyway. Yeah, now he's drawing that card that he forgot. You know, this is really a friendly match. Players are quite friendly with each other, remind each other of triggers that they, they've missed. Here we see a Savannah line. I mean that Howling Mine is so good for, uh, for Kundert. Dropping to 8 here because of the Copper Tablet. Denzel needs some good cards. A Relic Barrier would be great. If he's playing with one, of course, we don't know. He's got a lot of Berserks in hand. He's going to take the damage, but he could play those Berserks, though. There's Berserk number one. There's Berserk number two. So he's going to take 16 points of damage. There's Berserk number three. He's winning it here. This is crazy. Could there be a Storch to Plowshares from Kundert? He's looking at his hand. No, there's not. Wow, what a steal of a game. Denzel winning this out of nowhere. I thought his packs or, or his bags were packed already, but he's winning it out of nowhere. This shows you the immense power of a Berserk that's not answered. Three Berserks, that means 8, 16, 32 damage with one single Urnum Jin. Crazy, 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 crazy stuff here. Both players now going to dive into their sideboards and we're going to catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So it's uh, one game up for Denzel. That means that Kundert is again on the play, just like in game one. Let's see what he can do. There's a Mishra's Workshop into a Chaos Orb and a pass. Interesting opener. Probably means that he doesn't have a turn one creature to play like a Curdape or a Savannah line. There we see a power plant into a soul ring into a Felwer Stone. Now the Felwer Stone still taps for nothing though. Because the workshop doesn't create any uh, colored mana. But uh, both players kind of uh, starting very well, having a lot of mana to their disposal. There's a plateau into a Curdape, which is just a 1-1. One -one. 
and a pass turn. So now the Felwer Stone can make white and red mana for Denzel. Denzel having his City of Brass in hand, it seems, a Taiga. He's got a Berserk. There's a Mana Vault, so a lot of mana sources for him. Now he just needs something. Is that perhaps a Triskelion there all the way on the left side of his hand? It's hard to see. If it is so, he could play it out. You know, he can tap the Vault. Exactly. Then he will have six mana now. He's actually tapping a mana... Uh, too much. You can keep the power plant on tap, but this is really a nice start for Denzel. I mean, turn two, Triskelion, that is really, really good. He's gonna kill the Kurt Ape and pass him to turn here. There is a Zavanna. Now, obviously, Kundert can choose to flip on the trike, choosing to bolt the, tri the Triskelion, probably. Denzel can take the two points off, of course, throw them at Kundert. Kundert's gonna drop here to 18. And there's a pass turn again. Is he gonna untap the Volt? He is. And then he's gonna draw for turn. Another land. This is the thing that I have a lot when I play Tron. You always, when you've got a power plant, you draw another power plant. When you've got a tower, you draw another tower. It's like it hardly ever happens that you draw into natural Tron. It's really tough. And Kunder just passing the turn, so giving some time here to Denzel. Denzel finding a mine. Interesting, putting three points of damage on Denzel with a bolt. Does that mean that he's got a Wheel of Fortune in hand, perhaps? Another Savannah, tapping the Savannahs, untapping them again. Yeah, there's the Wheel of Fortune, and he's got, it looks like he's got just got a Giant Grove and a Giant Grove in hand. And Denzel here losing a Berserk and two City of Brasses, so I think both players can be quite happy with this Wheel of Fortune. Look at that double Howling Mine, Suchi, another Trike, another Suchi. So a lot of firepower there in the hand of Denzel. Let's see what Kundert can do. I do believe I see a Kurt Ape there in his hand, but he doesn't have the mana to play it out. Already had a land drop, I believe. Or not, actually. I'm, yeah, I think he had a land drop. Anyway, looks like a pass from Kundert here asking about the Tron land. So at this moment, Denzel has two power plants and a mine. There's a tower, so he's got Tron active. That means he can now produce nine mana in total just from the Tron Lance alone. Wow. And I see a clay statue there in hand of Denzel. That's a 3-1 from Antiquities, two to regenerate. Looks like he's gonna ask a question, maybe a rules question to somebody. Counting the amount of mana. I mean, this is what you wanna do in a Tron deck, right? He's counting up all the mana. What is he gonna do? And remember, Kundert already lost that first game. So he needs to win it here if you want to see a game three. There's another Felwer Stone. Tapping for four mana. Gonna cast a clay statue. He's really in the tank right now, trying to decide what to do next. I would definitely keep some mana open to regenerate the statue. Tapping four here for a Suchi. The thing is, he is playing against a white mage, and the reason I'm saying that is that uh, the thing is with these white wizards, they have a card in their deck called Balance, so you don't want to overcommit to the board, and Denzel is really overcommitting. On the other side, though, of the coin is, of course, Balance is restricted, so it's just one card. So I also understand this line here from, uh, from Denzel, and he still has, I believe, a trike in hand that he can use later, so next turn he can Swing in for 11. There's the balance. Oh, man. That's the thing, you know. They always have that balance. This is so unfortunate for Denzel. So unfortunate. So he's got three cards in hand. He needs to lose a land, it seems. Yeah. 
And then he's going to lose all his creatures. That's really going to hurt. I mean, it's a good thing he still has that... Uh, I believe it's Triskelion in hand. I'm not quite sure. And of course, Kunert also has to discard some cards. Just discarding the lands. He's trying to regenerate, but that's not going to work. Because they're not destroyed, so regeneration doesn't work. There's a strip mine taking care of the Tron land. Oh, such a good turn for Kunder, though. And there's a Kurt Ape. But this is devastating here for Denzel. He was doing so well. Now, remember, he also has, I believe, two. Howling Mines in hand. I really hope for Denzel that that's a trike in hand, that I'm not mistaken. There we see another mine. So he's got a power plant and an Urza's mine. He just needs the tower. But still, he's got quite a lot of mana. Tapping four. Five and six. Yeah, I think we're now going to see the trike hitting the board. Yeah, and trike is just such a good creature because even if... Um, you know, Kunder decides to flip on it. There is a Howling Mine. Even if he decides to flip on it with the Chaos Orb, then of course uh, Denzel can still use those counters to, for example, kill the Kurt Ape. So there's always value in the Triskelion. And he's going to pass the turn here. So two cards now for Kunder because of that Howling Mine. Perhaps there are that. Perhaps there's more land in hand there, trying to have a little sneak peek at his hand, it's hard to see. Probably more land, he's a little bit flooded. But both players are still very much in it though. And it looks like Kundert's passing, not quite sure. Oh, look at that. He's putting three damage on Kunder. It seems going to put him on 15. That's interesting. And now he's going to flip. Okay, so he's going to flip. And in response, oh, it's a missed flip as well. So in response to the Chaos Orb activation, he was using his... Um, his Triskelion and on the life total of Kundert, which surprises me a little bit. I would have expected him to kill the Kurt Ape here, but he probably has its reason, has uh, his reasons. He's untapping the Mana Vault here, drawing two for turn. What is his plan with that Kurt Ape? There is another Taiga. Also, Denzel finding a lot of lands in this uh, second game. Tapping to another Howling Mine. I mean, it's cool, you know? You always love to draw cards in Magic, so... Let's play another Howling Mine. The problem, of course, for Denzel is that every time he's giving that advantage to Kundert, Kundert is the first person to take advantage of the mine. Yeah, there's a Relic Barrier. Remember, Relic Barrier can shut the mine off, so in the upkeep of Denzel, he can tap one of the mines. Looks, it looks like he's going to animate the factory attack with factory and Kurt Ape. He can still pump the factory as well to a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, yeah, this is tough now for Denzel. It looks like he's going to take the damage. Five points of damage going to drop to nine. More pressure on the board. And that's, of course, what happens with those Howling Mines. You're giving your opponent all those goodies. And they're going to hit you with it. You know, that's what happens. Denzel now can draw three cards. There's an Urnum Jin. A Berserk and I believe a land. That Berserk is quite good and at least he's got a blocker. There is another Urza's Mine. Going to tap four. There is an Urnum Jin, so four or five creature. I mean, he can keep the trike to potentially block the Savannah line. That's a nice block. And passing the turn here. Ooh, he's going to tap the trike. 
And here you can see, by the way, that uh, Kunda prefers to draw that extra card from the Howling Mine instead of, um, you know, tapping it down in the upkeep of Denzel. So he's like, you know what, Denzel, you draw an extra card, but I'm also going to draw that extra card, and I'm fine with that. And I mean, look at the amount of creatures on the side. Oh, there's another Relic Barrier on the side of Kundert. It's going to animate both factories. He's just going to swing in with everything. He knows that Denzel's on nine. And yes, he's going to lose a creature in the process, but who cares? He's going to hit him at least for eight, put him on one, and then he's dead the next turn. Yeah, so we see one block. I think I would probably go for a factory here. Kurt Ape, I mean, it doesn't really matter that much. Yep, there's a bolt. End of the road here in game number two for Denzel. And without that balance, I really think Denzel would have gotten the game. But it didn't happen. So uh, game number two here for Kundert. And I'm actually happy because it means we are going to go to game number three. Game number three, the big decider. Look at that, Kundert taking a mulligan. And the good news here for Denzel is he's on the play, so that should give him a little bit of advantage. Look at that, Denzel also taking a mulligan though. He's gonna go down to six as well. And let's see who's gonna win this. There's a Black Vice. Not the best card against the deck of Kundert because Kundert, of course, he molt as well, which is unfortunate for Denzel, but also the deck of Kundert is so quick. Look at that, exactly. He can play at so many smaller creatures. Taiga into Kurdape. Classic opener here for Kundert. There is a Mana Vault. Ooh, and no land drop for Denzel. Could consider tapping the Vault to cast the Felwer Stone, but that's not ideal, I wanted to say. He's going to do it, though. So one Mana floating, and of course he can use the Mana from the Felwer, but no, just passing the turn. Yeah, this is unfortunate. There's another Kurt Ape attack here for two. That means Denzel's gonna drop to 18. We also see a missed land drop by Kundert. The problem here, of course, for Denzel are those two Kurt Apes. If he can find, I do see an Atog there. He could play the Atog, which is quite good with the Mana Vault and the Vice. He also has a Bolt in hand. Actually, that hand's looking quite good. <laughs> I'm still not a big fan of the Howling Mines in this matchup. Okay, there's a bolt on one of the Kurt Apes. And there's a pass turn. The damage for Kundert dropping to 16. So the Vice is doing some work, and I guess if Kundert cannot find any lands. There's a Vice though. But then again, look at the, the hand size of Denzel. I mean, that Vice is not going to do much. The Volt is actually doing most of the work. So there is an Urnum. Now he's probably going to cast the Atok. There's the Atok hitting the board. That's pretty good news for him. Now he's got a blocker for that Kurt Ape. Another damage for Kundert. Kundert still looking for lands. He's got a Savannah Lions in hand, I believe, but then he, of course, needs a White Source. Okay, there, there it is, the Savannah. Savannah into Savannah Lines could be an option for him. Perhaps he also has an Atok in hand. There's a Relic Barrier. Ooh, and that is really nice with that Mana Vault. Because even if later in the game Denzel can untap the Mana Vault, Kundert can simply tap it again with the Relic. And now he's going to tap down the Felwer Stone. That's also quite good. He's going to eat the Atok. So it'll become a 3-4 now. Problem, of course, for Denzel is if he attacks, yes, he deals three points of damage, but the next turn, Kundert can swing with the Kurt Ape. Although that only does two points, so I guess this is, is a good move. Putting Kundert here on 12, not taking any damage from the Vice. There is another Kurt Ape. He's really finding lots of Kurt Apes in this match. That's really good for him. Attack here for two, putting Denzel on 12. What Denzel really needs is some mana and an Earthquake. That would be ideal against this deck of Kundert. 
going to tap that uh, Flower Stone again. Yeah, Relic barrier, barrier, in my opinion, is still a little bit underplayed because it's so good against the Mana Rocks and, of course, the Moxen. But here you can see it being so annoying, uh, for Denzel at least, to tap down that Felwer Stone. And Denzel is very unlucky here, not finding any lands. All he can do is pass the turn. It's looking pretty bad for him at the moment. At least he's got the Atok to block with. He could make a block sacrifice. If, of course, Kundert's gonna attack. Maybe Kundert's gonna wait until he draws into a Giant Grove, for example. Or perhaps he already has one. There's the attack. Difficult for Denzel. Is he gonna take six, drop to six? He's gonna eat the vice. In response, there's the lightning bolt. He could eat the Felwer Stone. Not gonna eat the Felwer Stone though. I would have considered eating the Felwer, to be honest. Now he's going to take six points, going to drop to six. The reason I would consider eating the Flower Stone is that it's not useful anyway because of that Relic Barrier. Oh man, but this is such a frustrating game for Denzel here. He had an okay start, but now finally he finds a land, but it's too little too late. I mean, he's on seven. He could kill a line with that one Fireball, put him on six. I guess that's the best thing that he can do. So he's going to kill that one measly lion, and then of course next turn he's going to drop to two. I mean, this is this is really tough, Dan. So this is very unlucky here for you in game number three. There's the attack, going to put him on two. There's the bolt, end of the line. And that was game number three. Of course, I'm always hoping for a thriller of a game three, you know, but. It wasn't in the cards today. Still a fun match to look at and two really cool decks to see on the channel. Thank you Kundert and Denzel for showing your skills here on Timmy Talks. And also thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And before you go, I'd like to ask you to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for subbing the channel and supporting the channel. Please like, share and comment on this because that's all free and really helps the channel move forward. And then there's one last thing that you can do, and that is become a patron of the show that already starts with $1 a month. So it's quite cheap and you get a lot of cool perks. One of the things is you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord. You can join the Timmy Talks online events and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video, including this one. Let's go to the end scroll. Zeke!